Hey friends, this is Brandon from This Is Tech Today, and we gotta talk about something. We need to talk about the Google Pixel 2 XL screen. Now, I'm sure you may have heard a ton of information and, and concern over the display, but is any of it valid? Well, I'll show you some tests on mine and give you some thoughts and everything. It may not be as bad as you think, but it depends. So there's just a lot of talk about the 2XL screen issues, and I'm not gonna say that it's not true. It's clearly, there are some, some valid reports of issues like graininess, uneven display, splotchiness, screen retention, and there seems to be a consistency of black schmear and blue shift. Now for me, I got really lucky. The only thing that I have on my phone is the blue shift and then the black schmear. So we'll take a look at that on the test. So there's been a lot of talk about green and it kind of has a papery look to it, but mine doesn't have that issue. And then there's splotches where there's an area that is lighter or darker than the rest. The way that you can test this is by having a solid gray screen and adjusting it based upon different kinds of brightnesses like you've seen here. It doesn't look like my device has any of that. It seems quite even at max brightness and a low brightness. And then there's the black schmear, and it's kind of the pixels having a delay in being able to turn on because a solid black pixel is turned off on an OLED screen. So at the lowest setting, it is really slow to activate. And this is where you have the black schmear, where the black areas of the face are actually blending into other areas when you're moving. It's not sticking right with the image. And so mine does have that at 0 to 10% brightness, but once you bring it up to 20% or higher, it's not so bad. And honestly, you're, you're not going to like have your screen turn down that low for most cases anyways. So OLEDs have a potential risk of having what's called a burn-in or image retention. So if a certain kind of image has been in one particular area for a long time, the image can continue to linger on the display itself. Thankfully, my phone doesn't have this issue and I've been using this phone rigorously for about eight days now. And then the blue shift, I definitely have this. It seems like every single 2XL has this issue. And it's true, it is more severe than other phones. After about a 15 to 20 degree angle, you see the blue shift. Now, other devices have the same issue, but they're just not as severe. I have last year's Google Pixel XL right here, and it does have a color shift. It just happens to go to a more warmer look than a cooler look. So when we talk about the desaturation of color, it reminds me of something what's called log profiles when you're filming video. And it's totally not the same thing, but it's, it's somewhat similar in terms of my mindset. So it looks desaturated. So a log profile is when you have things unsaturated on video and that allows you to have greater dynamic range. It's so that you have more details in the highs and the lows. And then what you end up doing is you go back afterwards and you add color to it, you add saturation and things like that. Um, so here's an example right now of log profile. It looks desaturated. And then we go back here and this is what it looks like when you have color processing. You add the saturation and the contrast. So the Google Pixel 2 XL screen reminds me of that. I know that's not actually what's happening, but if you haven't been able to look at the phone in person, maybe that's a way for you to better understand what's going on. Now for the colors, it's really interesting. If you turn on sRGB on last year's Google Pixel, they actually look quite similar to, to each other. Now if I were to take the sRGB off on the previous year's Google Pixel, it's way different. The colors are way more vibrant. And, and you can definitely see a little bit of a difference with the vibrancy turned on on the 2XL, but it's not all that great. What's really interesting and something to point out is this is definitely a software thing. When you pull up an HDR video on YouTube, the Google Pixel 2 XL will display HDR content. So that should be really encouraging because it looks really amazing. The colors are really bold. You can see a lot of dynamic range as it should. So as you can see in the side by side, things like the skyline and shadows, you can see more detail on the 2XL. Now keep in mind I have sRGB on on the last year's Google Pixel. So it's not gonna display as much colors to begin with. When you turn sRGB off, there is a little bit of a setting that Google managed to, to put in there where it kind of fakes HDR content on YouTube. And I'll admit, it looks pretty good and it actually has that kind of cliche HDR look to it. Having a camera record a screen is, is just not the same thing, but there's a cliche kind of look of HDR that's kind of unnatural in a way. <laughs> like real life doesn't look that way, but it looks beautiful. So last year's Google Pixel 2 XL does achieve that HDR look better than the 2 XL only if sRGB is turned off. But you can see more contrast in the 2 XL. And so that really depends on if you want something that looks more natural or if you want that kind of artificial HDR look. 
look. Now, since we talked about the HDR content and how it was able to have that saturated look to it, this seems like it's totally a software issue and that they can fix. Now, sRGB isn't a bad thing inherently. The iPhones have been able to do this for a while and it looks great. At the bare minimum, the calibration of these screens is quite poor. So what that means is there should be a way to calibrate this with software. Someone posted about this recently on Twitter in response to NKBHD's video, so I'll link that down below for you to check out. Thanks to that guy for being able to research that and educate everyone a bit more. Just keep in mind that I'm not trying to get into the technicals of all of it. I'm just trying to give impressions of it and trying to explain it in a way that should be easy to understand for the average Joe. Also, Google just released information that they are going to release a software update to add a saturated mode to the Google Pixel 2 XL. How much of a saturation that is, or what percentage that is, or if it adds a calibration to the display, we'll find out. But the good thing is, it sounds like Google's listening to user feedback. So continue to send in your suggestions. There's a chat feature in there, there's email, there's a bunch of different options there. Continue to send in any suggestions you have, and hopefully we'll continue to make some progress. So what are my thoughts? What are my conclusions? If you manage to find a device that only has the blue shift and the black schmear, I would keep it. The reason why is I honestly don't really notice these things that much. For the black schmear, I don't have my device turned down all the way to zero. I can't think of a moment that I actually use that. And to only turn it up to 20% in order to get it so that it doesn't have the black schmear is not that much of a difference. As for the blue shift, I honestly did not even realize that it was there until I started reading about it. And yeah, I definitely notice it quite a bit. And for a $1,000 device, it really shouldn't be there. That's totally right. But it's kind of like one of those things where if you return it over one thing, you end up missing out. The best way I can think of it is, say you had a birthday party and the cake you got was vanilla instead of chocolate and instead you chose to not have a birthday party altogether. There's so many really fun and amazing things that you can have at that party, but you chose to cancel over one thing. The sound of the phone, the software experience, everything about it is just so dang good that the idea of me returning this device over just the blue shift, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I would miss it. I would feel like I'm missing out big time. And so that's just what my personal opinion is. You may differ from that. I still agree that for a thousand dollars that it shouldn't have that issue, but I'm willing to concede that one area because everything else is so good and I don't want to leave it. So if we want to look at objective data, there is actually a survey that was put out in the Google Pixel Reddit forum. As of October 26th, the survey has just about 2,000 entries in there and about 55% of people who submitted information didn't have any issues with the display. Now surveys are inherently kind of difficult because the people who are more likely to fill them out are probably the ones who have issues with it, but it's still helpful to know that you have a 55% plus opportunity of finding a phone that has a good display is, is somewhat comforting. That's still a very high percentage of issues with displays. What my suggestion would be is that if you are getting into XL, make sure you get it from the Google store online. And then they do have a really great return program that's available. So in terms of the risk, the biggest thing is just having a temporary hold on your card and having to go through the, the work of returning the phone and waiting for a new one. That's still an inconvenience, but you won't be stuck with a bad device as long as you talk to Google. If you want to go to that thread and look at the survey, either put your entry in there or look at the results, that, once again, that will be linked down in the description. And while you're there, please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe. So at the end of the day, I really don't think it's as big of an issue as long as you have a good display. Human beings will adapt quite well. So most of the time, I really don't notice any of these issues on my phone. And even if you have some of the more severe issues, you probably won't notice them unless you're constantly looking for them. So just enjoy the phone. Everything else is so dang good that I just love this device and I couldn't bear to return it and not have it anymore. Now, if some of you are upset about the price and how it's not at the quality that it should be, I understand, I totally do. Uh, I'm not saying that that's the wrong thing at all. I just think some people's threshold for the quality may be a bit different than others. Even for someone like me who makes videos and cares about color correction and, and whatnot, it doesn't bother me enough to get rid of it because overall the upside, the benefits of having this device are far greater than the downside of just the display. And you may disagree with me and that's totally okay. We're entitled to our opinions. And I'd encourage us to have a helpful, constructive discussion down below in the comments. So go ahead and leave your thoughts down below 
And if you found this helpful, could you please help me out by giving me a thumbs up and subscribe? I'm a small YouTube channel and every little bit helps. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this is informative and maybe give you either some relief or help you make a more informed decision. I have some more videos on the Google Pixel 2 XL. I'll have a playlist down below and I have some more videos on the way. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.